Welcome to The Mischief. I'm Valen, and this is Project Shore. Uh, it's an ongoing game that's currently being developed. This is a very early, early version, and only one of the different options of how you can play this game. It's currently received the Crucible of Blood update, and I do have a weakness for this game, if only because one of the devs' name is also Valen. But uh, we're going to jump into this just so you guys can get a look at this. I'm going to uh, put some links in the description below, and uh, you guys can check out uh, how to help out this uh, this developer, or at least check out the game for yourselves, uh, request beta access as it is. It's a really cool looking indie game, and I look forward to its development in the future. But let's start off a new one, and then I can show you a little bit of some more advanced stuff. We're going to just start a new game. Welcome to the Crucible of Blood. This is an endless arena game mode. This is only one mode of multiples that they have planned, uh, where you participate in fights, grow your character, and tackle even stronger opponents. Uh, and then it gives you a little bit of information about how to progress. Now this is you to start with. You are a single character. If I press the tab key here, you can see that I have actually two characters. That single character you saw in the uh, other screen here is just represent representative of uh, your party per se. But if I bring up this uh, menu, you can see that I have Morton and Ren, and this is currently the party leader. Uh, I can actually change their formation as well uh, in the future, but for now, this is all that's available to us. We only have the line formation, which means we just stand next to each other at the beginning of the battle. So if I right click on Morton, you can see that he has uh, a few different items here and lots of different ways that you can, uh, it's got a little tutorial built in, I'm kind of skipping past it a bit, I probably should have turned that off, I apologize, but if you look here, uh, there, he's got a couple swords, he's a dual wielder to start with. You can switch this up, if you don't want him to use long swords, uh, you can have him use a, a sword and a shield, you can have him use a, a battle axe, you can have him use whatever you want. Uh, like for instance, we could have him start off with a great sword instead. You can see his physical power is 53, by equipping the great sword it becomes 68, uh, which could have its own benefits or drawbacks. Now right now, he's dual wielding, so if I take one of these off uh, and unequip it, he does. he becomes a one-handed combatant. Uh, then if I switch this out to a great sword, he becomes a two-handed combatant. And each one of these that he could potentially have, he will start learning more and more skills depending upon how he currently has been equipped. So if you switch these different items out, he will then turn into kind of a different character, uh, per se, at least in battle. So that's something to really take into effect. In this case, I'm actually going to keep the, uh, the double long swords effect here. You can switch out any armor that they might have, and look, there's a, a magical amulet which gives him like a, a bonus to his uh, combat damage. Uh, and you can see all their different stats here, and it has little brief descriptions on them. It's very smooth and easy to understand if you have a question, because just about everything has a highlight over it when you uh, do so. Now let's take a look at Ren, the healer. Now this isn't just your average healer, she's a combat healer. Uh, as you can see, she's got a wooden shield, she has no armor to start with, you might be able to buy some. But you can also do this, low healing, restores a minor amount of health to a single character. I want to have that as an option. If you don't, you can just take that off and she will solely be used for combat in the future. For now though, I am going to equip that because it could be beneficial. You can see the different uh, abilities as before here. She doesn't have any accessories, she is not the uh, party leader either. So, we're just going to continue on, and if you look, there's Union 2. So if I wanted, I could actually left-click, create a second union, and this is basically uh, how many parties you have in combat. I could drag Ren over here. Ren and friends, Morton's company. So let, let's, let's click on Ren now, and therefore she has options of her own. In fact, we're going to um, put her back into this one so that I can show you how things actually work. We're going to remove this union. We're going to start off with a single party. Now, looking around, we have a bit of an area that we can explore, you know, we can walk around just by left-clicking and check out this little area, but it's just a battle arena map. So you're, you're just gonna walk up to this guy, the Keeper, and talk to him. Welcome to the Crucible of Souls, Challenger. And you can tell him, I'd like to fight in the Crucible, which is basically uh, PvP combat, uh, well, uh, PvE, I guess, I don't know, you, you, you versus some other creatures, people, whatever. Uh, you can also uh, buy and sell goods from him, or you can just ask him what this place is. It's an anteroom to the world that exists beyond, a place for you to bide your time awaiting entry to make an acquaintance. Okay, that's great. There are only echoes that dwell here besides us. 
echoes of those who inhabit the reality, submitted to the strongest will present. And your will is to fight, is it not? Welcome to the Crucible of Souls, Challenger. And, uh, yeah, so there we are. I'd like to fight in the uh, Crucible. But before that, let's, let's let's take a quick peek at the, at the... Oh, wow, look at all this. He's got tons of weapons. We have 500 monies to start with. So feasibly, I could just get my lead, my guy an, another great sword if I want, but I already have one. So I'm not really too worried about that. There are some really cool weapons in here, but I can't really equip those. I could switch my uh, lead character out to be like a sword and shield type if I wanted, or even switch it for like a halberd or add in a broadsword. I could actually afford this right now and upgrade one of his uh, current long swords, I think. But I don't think that I'm going to do that. Instead, oh look, there's a great hammer. Uh, instead, I would... I, I think I'm going to uh, get leather uh, or leather armor and a dagger amulet. Now let's get two dagger amulets for uh, our healer character. Purchase these and continue on because I don't think that any of the rest of this is really going to help at the moment. Uh, but now I can equip Ren. Uh, we can put her in some leather armor. It doesn't actually render very much. Uh, I think like unequipping it yet. That might change in the future. I don't know. But right now, this is pretty much how it is. You can then add in dagger amulets. So you can see just by hovering over it, it increases her physical power from 45 to 50. So by adding two of them, she has increased her physical power by 10, which is actually going to be quite good. She's a single-handed combatant, but she is quite capable. So let's talk to the keeper, and let's tell him we want to fight in the Crucible. I suggest if you are first starting. To choose make it simple because otherwise you're probably going to get a little overwhelmed then he basically says so be it the battle awaits and you go to this little area here and start your battle and then it's going to tell me the basics of battle in combat instead of controlling individual characters you issue orders to groups and in this case we only have the one group our opponent has three, which consists of uh, group one, two, and three. Each one only has one character because uh, this is like the little character portraits are listed along here. There's only one in each group. Your squads are located to the left of the screen, which is our squad here. Battle basics, etc. Orders. You can tell them all this different stuff, and I'm going to actually skip through these so I can just tell you. Now, you have control over combat to actually spin things around. Sorry if I spun it too quick there. I'm going to try and do this, and I'm actually going to turn combat speed down to half speed, so it's a little bit better to understand. Now, Morton's company, this being Morton, is going to uh, have the option, uh, basically you tell them what to do, and then they execute it. It's not exact, like in a Final Fantasy where you tell them, you know, I want you to specifically cast Ice 2 on this enemy or something. No, no. You say, attack with spells, attack with weapons, defend, heal, stuff like that. And then they go into play with the current abilities and things that they have at their disposal. So let's just go with fighting this first dog here. Now, if we choose Charge... You notice the PowerPoint cost here is dash. It says engage the target union in close combat. This being a union, this being a union, this being a union. Uh, then it says charge and engage the target in melee combat. That's the primary. It will use as many PowerPoints as you have for whatever it thinks is applicable for that moment. PowerPoints are things that you gain each turn uh, to allow you to do special maneuvers and abilities. Right now, these guys are very limited with what they can do. Engage the enemy. Uh, this, basically, you just run up and start hacking at them. Advance and tend to the wounded. This means that you guys, if you look here, engage the enemy. They both have a cogwheel, and their, their little avatars are uh, kind of highlighted there. Advance and tend to the wounded. Able to act. That means that our healer character here will try to uh, heal, if available, and attack, if not. So that's kind of one way, but either way, they will advance. So you could tell them to do this, but uh, there's no guarantee that there's going to be anybody that needs a uh, wound, uh, healing. Either way, let's try that to start with. And you see we've got a uh, line directing us to that character there. We're going to engage, and then it says we've got a battle queue at the bottom here. Characters participating in combat form an action queue. As you can see, uh, Morton is going to go first, and then Ren, and then uh, Doggo number one, Doggo number two, and most likely Doggo number three is going to be here. And uh, that's pretty much the order of combat. And you can see, yes, Crucible 0.2.0 work in progress. This is very early days, folks, but it's still looking beautiful in its current setup. Uh, so let's let's just kind of go through here. And yes, uh, combat is currently paused, which allows me, if I want to, to see what's going on. But let's unpause it. And we're going to watch this. Actually, let's go in a little bit slower of a speed here. You can see that uh, Morton is running up. He's going to go get that pupper. 
and he's gonna take it out hopefully uh, we'll, we'll see he, he might do a single attack he might do a double attack let's kind of scroll around here see if I can get a, a really there you go boom 55 down so he took that dog out because these dogs only have 40 health each now our combat healer here is actually due to go next we're gonna speed this combat up a little bit uh, and she doesn't have anything to do because she was either going to heal or attack that one unit now you can see where the tactics come in by keeping these both in the same group I kind of limit myself and they are both forced to commit to a similar action so these guys have their own special abilities like flank attack ah where it waits till the very end or close to the end of combat before attacking so in this case we can just engage the enemy or we can do what we did before advance and tend to the wounded which means that if Ren is still alive she will try to heal so let's try and do that uh, she should be able to act before these uh, puppers here in, in 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 hopes at least there we go he just downed another pupper which means that in this case she should heal herself because she has been injured 61 out of 105 Oop, there you go she's now at 91 out of 105 and then the remaining dog that passed has well passed and then the other one attacked so turn three now simple enough let's just have them engage the enemy because there's no point in actually trying to heal at this point if they can just take out the pupper and not need to worry about it and of course we can speed it up to normal combat speed done and you can see she healed herself what's with that well she had the extra ability heal available to her and even though there was no other targets to attack and no commands set to that she's still going to be somewhat smart about it and try and heal if possible now if they were both designed to attack and had no other options she would have just passed her turn and in this case we got 50 coins and two dog pelts what good are dog pelts why you can sell them at the market of course and get new and improved armors and items really cool so let's actually go and do that run over here and talk to the keeper uh, I would like you to show me your wares and we can go to the sell tab sell off the dog pelts Boop. both of them in fact if I were to double click this when I had two of them it would have given me a screen where I could choose how many I want to sell but in this case I only have the two I could sell the, the uh, greatsword too if I really want but for now I think I'll keep it and that's pretty much how it is once you've uh, gotten through here once you've fought enough battles you'll have a new option on here which actually I'm going to switch over to my other account and show you a little bit further along in the storyline here we are back at the uh, beginning here and I'm going to go to slot one which is uh, a little bit more experienced of a group all right same room same place not too much is different right wrong I have multiple units now if you look I've got Ren over here with Mallet Mallet is a healer by default Sigvard is a mage and can cast magical spells as well as do some really weak attacks with his uh, quarterstaff Reginald is kind of a, a rogue or a thief type that does like stabby attacks with a dagger Siegfried here uses a battle axe and uh, Morton as before dual wields but you can see he's got some more unique armor this stuff here is uh, uncommon he's got rings of the wolf a falchion an army issue sword and armor of the east which he's got a few abilities unlocked uh, first in as you can see increases his character speed passively so he's just faster by by default double slash uh, which attacks the target character with both weapons dealing moderate damage and attack level two basic attack generator and of course I can continue going through these we've got Siegfried the fighter there he's wearing plate mail and he's got some uh, items here but if you look remember that dagger amulet that increased their offense he also has a basic menders kit so if I have the group he's in attack and the enemies all in that group die and he still can go well he might actually use this mending kit to heal somebody instead which it might be minor but it's better than him just standing there doing nothing now if we continue on with Reginald he's just got a dagger strangely by giving him something a little bit stronger of a weapon it changes his abilities because it's not just one-handed combat it's like dagger combat basically and so each character will specialize in their different weapon types as well now if we move on we've got Sigvard who here has a special magical spell sparks fire blast etc and he can uh, increase or buff things as well he has the ability of two-handed combat with his quarterstaff 
but it's really going to be very weak and I haven't used it very much, so it's not very well developed like his magic has been. Uh, moving on, we've got Ren, who has an army issue rapier now, and she's quite good at it. And with her shield, she's able to block multiple attacks, take reduced, if any, damage from attackers. She has a lot of healing options now, a shield bash attack, as well as spell focusing things here. And then of course we've just got this standard healer named Mallet. Now we do have other characters as well that are not being used, like Irina here. She has an iron great axe, uh, leather armor, couple dagger amulets, nothing really fancy. I just purchased her, or hired her. And if you notice, I've got empty slots, so why not put her on one of these slots, you say. Oh, wait, it turned red up here. Maximum characters in battle. This is the amount that I'm allowed to have currently. By meeting certain milestones, I can change my uh, the number of unions I have available, which is like the number of uh, targetable parties or commandable parties, as well as the number of characters in them. Uh, right now, I may have a total uh, number of empty slots of nine, but I can only run six characters and three parties. So. The selected formations. Remember before I said you can actually change the formation of these? It doesn't technically change how they stand on the uh, the battlefield per se. It's more or less choosing a bonus or a minus. Uh, you can choose line, which is basic formation, no bonuses or penalties. Arrow, which increases strength and speed of all the characters. And the characters in the rear slots are less likely to be attacked. And orb, uh, increases intelligence and speed of the leader. This increases uh, magic defense and physical defense of other characters, but decreases the strength. The leader is less likely to be attacked. So in this case, Arrow. Uh, I, I have Reginald in the back, so he's less likely to be attacked because he's more of like the thiefy, sneaky guy and has a very lower uh, hit pool. I believe his hit points are 142, and if I look at some of the other guys, 185, 222. Yeah, these, these guys are, are, are a bit beefy in comparison, so therefore Arrow works really good because uh, its characters in the rear slots are less likely to be attacked. Now, if I go with uh, Sigvard's cadre, this one here, he's got the form of Orb, which increases his intelligence and speed. Intelligence is more a magic casting ability. It's also good for him to have more defense, and who cares about strength if you're not actually even using it? And then these guys here have Arrow as well, because if anything, it increases their speed. I could use it to increase, uh, like switch to Orb as well, but yeah, I, I just figured it's better to have them with a little bit of a, a damaging ability because Ren is still really good in combat, but as you see I can't really put her up here. So you'll notice as we progress, uh, more formations are available, more unions and so on, a lot more characters, and if I buy things from this guy here, uh, let's show me your wares. You can see he's got a lot more options, some more unique items, a bone axe, a double glaive, fiery broadsword, even characters can be purchased or unlocked just by fighting them and defeating them in battle. So it's got a lot of options. Now in this case, I'm going to actually choose uh, a, 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 to attempt a trial, which means we're going to be, f be fighting some kind of big bad or a big group of baddies. And this is, I believe, a level three blood. That we are going to be going in against and this is kind of a, an awkward battle to actually uh, show you things with but i only have so much time to do this so i am going to show you here and as you can see we have quite the foe to face here in the form of essence of stone with 1750 health dear god and it also has the ability to summon creatures if you look here, it has petrification. At the end of the turn, it petrifies a random, unaffected character. How terrifying. A large creature, deadlock capacity increased by two. Shattering at the end of turn deals damage to the whole battlefield. Yes, yes it does, which is very devastating. Uh, Call of Stone peri periodically calls for help from lesser stone spirits. Yeah, yeah, he's a friendly guy. Um, so we've got our group here, which uh, you see I've got mostly um, my physical damage dealers here. So that, uh, which they're chosen first, if I choose this, you can see engage the enemy, charge. It's very simple, straightforward, that's why I put them all together, right? Sigvard is a little bit different. If I right click on here, you can see uh, engage the enemy, which would mean he'd run up and hit this rock beast with a stick. That's probably not very effective. Attack from afar, which means that he will use his ranged spells to attack it with. Or I can just tell him to attack with any spells that he has available which means he could use some that are more applicable, but for now I'm just going to tell him to attack from afar. Now Ren and friends, we're going to have her provide healing support. Now this is a little bit different 
uh, if you actually choose provide healing support, they're going to wait until the end of combat, and then they're going to start healing people. Alternately, we could tell them to engage the enemy, or we could have them advance and tend to the wounded afterwards. In this case, I actually think I'm going to go with advancing and tending to the wounded, uh, because I would rather them try to get any attacks in, and if there's uh, nobody needing healing, th then definitely attack this thing, because it is quite the beast. Now we're going to engage, see how we do. Alright, so let's slow this down a little bit because there's lots going on. Our first healer goes first, did a little tiny bit of damage. Let me zoom in a little bit, arcane feedback, so he's powering up his spells. And then he's going to start letting loose a good zap of 78. So you can see we're, we've got him outnumbered easily at this point. And it looks like we're just kicking his butt. Well, just wait. This guy's not going to be any kind of pushover. We've got a stab attack. And of course, we've got Ren coming in. Nobody's injured, so she should probably attack next. Call of Stone. Okay, so as you can see, we now have a new contender on the field. He just added in 155 more health worth of uh, enemy to the field in a different union. This is going to be problems for us. Oh, smash. Okay, intercepted. So interception in this case is where you target one character and somebody else intercepts them, forcing them to attack the interceptor instead. Petrification. Oh, well, he is now going to be, uh, yeah, he's petrified. Cannot act. Preparation reduced to zero. So yeah, he he's just a stone statue now, folks. Not not really going to help us much right now. <laughs> so let's see what we can do here. We can attack the uh, stone spirit, but we could leave it running free. In this case, let's uh, continue the onslaught with our main physical fighter group. Uh, then we've got Sigvard. Of course, he's going to want to attack with spells, but from afar using multiple powerpoints so he can he can kick more butt because he's been going on for two battle rounds now then ren and fa ren and friends we could have them uh hold the line which is engaged target union and so that they're basically attacking and healing if needed continuing the onslaught is just to continue attacking provide healing support yeah yeah same thing uh, and if people had status conditions that she could cure in this case, I don't think she can cure uh, petrification. She would actually have that as an option as well. Uh, but in this case, I think I think we're going to go with uh, continuing the onslaught because people are... Well, I guess the, the healer is pretty pretty hurt right now. So let, let's go with hold the line. So we do offense and healing. Engage the enemy. And we let it go. Now, I'm actually going to speed it up a little bit. You can see... Actually, no, I might keep it. The uh, healer just healed himself. Doing much better already. Uh, we've got Sigvard is Sigvard is walking backwards, caused some burning, and the creature is now burning, which means it's going to take damage over time. It's crippled uh, with decreased speed and a burning effect. It summoned another creature. That's that's not that's not a good thing. Uh, we're we're soon going to be outnumbered, and this thing is not even at half health at this point. So you have to start realizing. All right, what are my priorities at this point? We're down one character. Nobody's really been hurt that badly, but uh, things can be going badly very quick. Flank attack. Here comes some of the little enraged stone spirits that he uh, summoned in. Ouch. That's that's definitely going to hurt. It's attacking a petrified member, which preferably I'm all right with that. Oh, she blocked it and took partial damage. That was awesome. A good block by Ren. And then, oh. Boom! It does a slam attack that hits three people for 78. My main damage dealing group is almost down, and it just petrified our mage. This is not looking good, folks. Not looking good at all. I don't actually expect to win this battle because I didn't uh, max out everything that I could potentially do so before this. In this case, I'm just more or less showing you what we can do. So let's have Morton's company see about trying to kill one of these guys. Um, I could tell them to advance and tend to the wounded. This seems strange. Why would my main physical group be doing this? If you remember, our, uh, the uh, axe-wielding guy, uh, let's see, it's Siegfried here, he has a medical kit, which he can do a very small amount of healing. In this case, it's better that he does the damage, because that, that healing is so minuscule, it's, it's not even worth it. Uh, Sigvard is still petrified, but I can still give his group commands. In this case... There are no actions available. So let's go to Ren and Friends, and we're going to have her try and, I don't know, maybe 
maybe continue attacking this guy, but um, uh, we could do continue the onslaught using one power point or two, which is just constant damage. I don't think that she's that these guys are going to be alive by the time she's able to provide the healing support. So I'm, I'm still going to have her just do damage at this point. And I'm going to have engage because Sigvard can't do anything. You can see we get a lot of attaction, uh, a lot of actions at the beginning. Let me actually zoom in a little bit. Nice critical hit on that stone spirit. She just concussed the essence of stone with her attack. And we've got one stone spirit down. This is good news. First good news we've had, really. And this guy's at about half health. <laughs> and we're, we're down below half health. So things aren't going that well. And it still has... Ooh, an attack that we evaded. Nice. Well done. But a flank attack is not good. Oh, it's that big slam attack that just takes everybody out at the end. Ugh. And that shattering as well. Yep. So you can see just how dangerous this can be. But this is this is just a sample of this game, folks. There's actually going to be like a, a story type adventuring questy bit as well that I've been seeing some screenshots for. It's in early development, and I highly recommend you check this out. So um, that's pretty much it. Let, let's continue the onslaught. Might as well just fully commit at this point and and that that's wow, that's all that can happen because there's just the two of them left. <laughs> Hold the line. Okay. So if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to give a like, comment, subscribe, and as always, be sure to spread the mischief to others. And if you, <laughs> if you want to support the mischief, be sure to check out the links in the description below. And as always, see you guys next time. Oh dear.